Hello folks, welcome back to Let's Play Zork Nemesis, I'm the Mysterious JG, and I want to double check and make sure that we're at the right save state, this should be it. But I believe it's time for us to go after the last remaining elemental metal thingy. The last major location in the game. I think it's time for us to head to Dr. Klutzy von Dornob's asylum. Indeed, all that's left is air, water. After all, we uh, have a special uh, setup where we've already dealt with it, but we didn't finish it off so that we could uh, see the speech that you get when you get air. Because the last of the four guys that you deal with, you don't get to see their speech. It cuts directly to something else. So, um, now that we know this to be true, search our feelings, Luke, we know it to be true, Let's save it over all of the slots that we use for LPing. Uh, so that I know where we are, what's going on. And uh, this is Jupiter Air. Let's go to Jupiter, get more stupider. The planet of my third favorite Sailor Scout. <laughs> Which one's Jupiter? I assume it's one of these two biggies. It should be that one, actually. That should be it. Jupiter... We're not actually literally traveling to Jupiter. We're going to the north to the Frigid Mountains. Or no, the Frigid River. I don't know what the mountains are called. But uh, either way, we're going up to the Frozen North. Which is the home of an asylum that is manned by Dr. Sartorius and presumably his staff of other guys. And here, this is actually going to be probably the quickest one of these to get through, but also the creepiest. We might be able to do this one single kind of long video. Okay, so it's like Techno City USA here. This is like that stage in Bionic Commando with the music because it's like all technologically advanced and stuff. And we appear to be on level one according to that giant ball. And uh, file cabinets. Zoe Wolf. Name, Zoe Wolf. Status deceased. Date of birth, 14 November 900 GUE. Place of birth, Frostlam, Grey Mountains. I think the Grey Mountains is the actual location that we're at. Uh, previous medical condition, ocular gyrocrisis resulting in chronic mental imbalance. Previous medical condition, none. Previous surgeries, uterine zaproscopy preparatory. Okay, I think that's saproscopy. I don't know if that's a made-up term or not, but preparatory uterine. Hmm. Drug use, various, prozork, zithium, dizorcpan, allergies, platypus mites, prescribed treatment. When we first received the patient at the asylum, she was suffering from chronic delusions, phantoms. Okay, so we wolf and I was into Alexandria's last name wolf. I had pointed out that it was weird that Alexander didn't have the same last name as her father, and then we realized, of course, her father's a monk, and uh, she is adopted. And we saw the letter, of course, from the uh, Grand Inquisitor. Malvo. Dear good doctor, I find myself getting weaker, and I find I have strange fever, which leaves me sweating profusely at night. I something as if at night I burn as if on fire I thought I would be ready for death I have spent my life preparing for the afterlife but in my heart I am not prepared I am ready to do experiments risky as they may be my mind is open yours truly F. Malvo thank you doctor you are truly a misunderstood genius for the first time in many months I have hope of a life without pain knowing our need for further apprentices I spoke to Madame Sophia of the Frigid River Branch Conservatory I believe she is the perfect person to assist us in our Quest, Francois. Dear Erasmus, I cannot sleep. The weight of invention presses upon me. I believe, Doctor, that we have discovered a science, a philosophy, that will relieve us of the binds of mortality and our own bodies. It is a scheme that must 
that will surely transform the world. Yorick will praise this great work, Francois. Dear good doctor, I find myself getting weaker, and I have the strange... Okay, it's the same, uh... We started over. Alright, so, as we established in the previous location, uh, it looks like Dr. Sartorius and uh, Francois Malveau uh, of the monastery, or the ones who really got this whole thing started, they brought in Sophia Hamilton and uh, not Deckard Kane, um, who were lovers and therefore got together. Oh, found Lucy and Kane. Name, Kane, Lucian, status, well, not admitted at this time, date of birth, 10 Oracle, 920 GUE, place of birth, the Castle Iron Dunes, south of Aragain, Aragain, previous medical condition, chronic respiratory, stitial violent virus as an infant, was hospitalized on three occasions prior to 925, previous medical condition, none, previous surgeries, none, allergies, none, prescribed treatment, father complains of rebelliousness and cowardice on the part of the subject, behavior to be closely monitored, father to be prescribed mild sedative. <laughs> Because uh, his father, of course, uh, send this one down to the lab. Beautiful cranium. His father. I didn't see that one before, actually. His father is, of course, uh, General Kane, who is, uh, you know, going around slapping his son, daring his son to murder him with a sword, just doing general like melodramatic teenage like this is a, it's some, something that a father would do in a script written by a melodramatic teen to show what a jerk they are patient x evil bloated gaseous humors out of balance helium empty injection should uh, helium injection should empty excess liquid that's actually kind of a clue for something much later although that's a the alchemy part, where you just keep clicking shit until it works, as far as I can make out. Okay, so we went through the patient's records and found some interesting stuff. What's going on in here? Well, to be quite honest with you, I know what we need to do in here, and we might as well visit another area first to save us some time, because we can't do it yet. Head over here. We have an elevator. You can turn it on. You can open the doors, you can close the doors. We're not going to bother with that yet. We can only go to floors that have a key in them, and right now there are keys in the first floor and the basement. But let's finish looking around before we mess with that. Well, there's not much left to do on this floor, actually. Maybe we do have to go to the basement before we can... Yeah, we have to go to the basement before we can do anything with that room. But since it's on the first floor, let's explore these things in the logical order. We have a machine over here. Can't really do anything with it. it appears that we have to put something in here. There's other things. There's a picture of craniums. There are some pipes. The pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen into the mountainside. We have this. We've got some kind of a box. We can now carry around with us, along with that album that we'll never be able to get rid of. Ever. We have a machine that goes ping. No, it just disposes of stuff. Put an infinite, apparently, supply of jars in this thing, and this does what? It x rays them. Okay. Well, let's try putting this box in there. 
Oh, it would appear to be a locker. We don't know the combination yet, so let's not even play with that. Let's just x-ray it. 2018. Well, I happen to know that that's not the full combination. So, you know, and if you put in those two numbers, uh, it wouldn't be enough to get it open. So let's not bother with that. Let's go look at this last little section, which I'm sure you've been interested in. It's a bunch of heads. Psychotic. Pacifist. Amnesiac. There's a lot of blood in this area. Genius. Jar Jar, you're a genius. Love, sex, long-term memory, aggression, short-term memory, logical reasoning, or logic reasoning. And something that we can interact with, although we can't really do it. Pressing the buttons doesn't do anything. We can interact with a spike. Uh, we cannot play the record using this thing, and that's the only item we've got to play with right now. It's not the safe either. So let's just go down to the next floor. Fortunately, going down to the next floor, I believe, is going to involve quitting and using... Um, yeah, we can't actually get to the... We can't actually get to the basement without quitting the game and uh, turning off the pan panning program thingy. Irritating as it is. So let's go do that. Let's not lose a lot of time here. Let's jump right on it. Get right back into it. It's not working. Because we need to... shut the elevator door. And uh, my speaker's acting up, which means it's hard for me to tell whether or not stuff has actually worked. So we shut the elevator door. And, yeah, I can tell this is working with or without the speakers. Can I help you? Ma'am? Somebody let out a blood-curdling scream of terror. That's fun. Yeah, the asylum's kind of a messed up place. I suppose there are really good-natured people who work in mental health, uh, who are annoyed to find that, like, about as positive and glowing a presentation as you're going to get is uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, that generally it's portrayed as being even more, like, horrible and nasty than that. At least in games like Zork Nemesis. So anyway, we have opened the doors. We are now in the basement. And this is a place of great pixel hunting. But first... Okay. There There's a guillotine here. There's a lot of pixel hunting to be done in this particular this particular location. It's funny. I thought uh Yes, understood. That's enough, thank you. So we have a bunch of empty... What do you call these things? Uh, shelves and mortuaries where they keep dead bodies. Morgues, I should say.
kind of creepy. We had that nice letter from a mother about how her son had a great job here and was really making something of himself. Now it's beginning to appear that this is not really a good place. There we go. And now we have acquired for our inventory a record and a body. I'm already doing a little better on my off screen because I managed to come out of the the fire monastery place with that torch sell my inventory. That was annoying. Ooh, we can interact with this. Can we put in a record? No. Can we put in a corpse? Yes, we can. Oh, good grief. Told you this is kind of the least pleasant location in the game. I can't think what else to do. I now have, for my inventory, a record and a severed head. Again, this this particular Zork game, some fans of Zork kind of turned on this game. Thought it was uh, grislier than it needed to be. Is this it for this floor? There's not like a full floor of stuff to explore, it's just this area. I'm hoping the screams stop when I uh, get back up to this first floor. I don't think they were as bad there, but my speakers weren't working, so it's not that I'm retarded. If they were going on the whole time I was up on that first floor, my headset speakers were messed up. But I believe it's only the basement where people were actually decapitated, where we've got the horrible screams of the uh, dead. I'm presuming that the people were dead before they were decapitated, but you know what happens when you make assumptions. You know what happens when you presume. You make a press out of you and oom. I don't know. Okay. Well, this one's a no-brainer. Pardon the pun. <laughs> Reminds me of a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, there's somebody there. What is this? Some kind of a joke? A joke? <laughs> That's creepy. It's a little creepy game. Uh, what were we talking about? Hey, do I know you? Oh, and its eyes are open again now. Gun over here. Let's try this. Heads are parts of bodies. I am a head. Thus, it would be only logical to conclude that I must be part of a body. Hmm. I must also infer that a different part of my brain must be feeling rather, um, concerned about this issue right now. <laughs> Guy was scheduled for a lobotomy. He wanted out. Stole a key. <laughs> How crazy is that? God's caught him. <gasps> Strip search time. He did the only thing he could do. Hmm. Right, we swallowed it. We know about that because we, we found a container with a key that looked to be in his stomach. Works for me. So that's a kind of clue if you hadn't already figured it out that, uh, you know, we, we went and x-rayed that thing and we saw that there's this, a key in there. I don't think that clue helps you much because you either go looking in there, you, you either put that thing in there and x ray it, or you don't. I don't, I didn't know that when you opened up that thing, it was a, it was a locker that would be the type for storing organs. It makes sense, though. God, you're beautiful. Thank you. Mm. 
this is Miss Bunny or whoever's I mean, commentator closer, keeps okay, I, uh, told me in one or two comments that I was sexy. I, think I, I love you. Okay. Let me tell you a little secret. Thirty-six, twenty-four, thirty-six. Those are your measurements. Oh. Yeah, Miss Money Electric, uh, the severed head, has just given me part of the combination. That's what we actually needed. The rest of this is just weird. Come on, right here. You want a piece of me right here, right now? I'll kill your freaking face off. <laughs> So I guess these kind of correspond with uh, what the different um, buttons represent here. We stimulate different areas of the brain. It tells us stuff. But I didn't figure that out until I'd already figured out the puzzle. I mean, it doesn't matter. You, you hit all the buttons trying to get information out of them. Turns out that love will give you the most information, um, I think. At any rate, we now have the full combination. Uh, you can try the two numbers we got from the x-ray first, and then the three numbers we got from him. And the correct answer is the three numbers we got from him, then the two numbers from the x-ray. Either way, I'm just going to get it off of the walkthrough, because uh, we've now gone through the process by which you get the numbers, and that's good enough. So it's 36, the first number we got from him, 24. He does give you... They do sound like measurements, which is, I think kind of a joke that might just trip you a little bit, 36, then uh, 2018. But these are actually the numbers of the combination. 18, I said. Okay. Now we have a tub, much like these ones. So we could hit B and get rid of this thing. Oh, but it won't remove it. So, never mind. We can't do anything with this as it is, but... Oh, you know what? I never bothered to find out what happens if you... Because this is the same... Uh, this item is the same as those ones um, in shape. I never bothered to figure out what happens if you just uh, you do that with one of the ones that doesn't have the key in it. But, of course, the actual puzzle is we put this thing in the hand it empties it out for us don't know why we couldn't empty it out ourselves then we go in here and it filters out the blood and we're left with the key kind of a gross way to get a key we got the key that the guy had stolen and swallowed when he was trying to escape from his lobotomy forced lobotomies Generally, if there are forced lobotomies happening, it's a sign that the uh, medical institution in question, you know, if it happens in literature or whatever, not a good place. Forced lobotomies generally frowned on. Hold on. No, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to save there at all. Cancel. can't get out of the screen. I'm trying to save on that first slot. There we go. God, I was really not wanting to work with me there. I was hoping to finish this thing fast enough that we could do it all in one video, because I know this one's the shortest. So... Doesn't seem to fit any of these, but it does fit 20. So if you close the doors and the truth is that although I was thinking it would be a really long and convoluted place to work your way through getting keys on all different floors no the 20th floor is the only one that you actually visit other than the basement and the first floor all the floors between 1 and 20 irrelevant it's just the very top floor and the bottom two floors that we need to visit in our quest oh wait that's not true there's actually another elevator to be found I forgot but yeah we don't get keys to these other floors. And there's no stairs, you know, stair puzzles. 
We have to figure out... Ooh, I take the elevator from 18 down to 14, then go up one flight to 15, which allows me to take the elevator to 13. Then there's the separate access stairs to 19. No, nothing like that. That's weird. That's weird. Making me uncomfortable. We'll head back there in a minute. Okay, we'll head back there now. There's nothing else on this floor. That's scary looking. That's scary looking. It is a medical bed covered in blood. There appears to be a needle on it. What are we looking at here? Uh, of music and the five notes, the something something thaumatological properties. Can't read that very well. The connection between the birth and the stars, the embryo, mystical conception and creation, planetary coordinates for the pure soul. Subject to him. As he sees the heavens open, the angels and Yorick ascending and descending and bequeathing to this one earth in perfect conception, the pure birth of the corpus spiritus, the perfect human spirit. The mystical conception can occur but every seventh solstice when a perfect alignment of the spheres sphere of the fixed stars follows the spheres of the planets Saturnax, Jupiter, Mers, Venus, Hermes, the sphere of the moon, and then the sphere of the four elements. The mystical conception followed by the pure birth lies fallow without the life lived in harmony with the spheres. So they were going for some kind of like perfect conception some kind of like thaumatologically alchemically aligned birth and these don't really help you any they're just showing you slides of conception that's nice not the sexy part either And a needle, can we pick it up? No, it triggers a scene. I, I'm not sure that I want to see this. I can't. Oh. It's a sin. It's wrong. Oh, never. Your child will be conceived in purity. How? Oh. Miraculously. Divinely. And the child, her destiny will be great. <laughs> yes. And your name will be blessed for bringing this child to the great empire. Oh. It's time. So we know the blood all over the table was about. Oh, wow. So the priest Malvo and Dr. Sartorius worked together to coerce a mentally challenged woman into having a child that they somehow figured out the dates and the star alignments or whatever to create a perfect alchemy child. I don't think we need to struggle too hard to figure out who that child was. It was Alexandria, the child that the uh, monk dude raises his daughter until he sent her off to the conservatory, run by one of his fellow alchemists. So, it would appear that three of the four alchemists had a strong connection with Alexandria even before she got involved with Lucy and Cain. Interesting. She was apparently an genetically engineered, almost, in a way, to be a child who would line up with the powers of alchemy. I guess they were going to... They figured that she would somehow have like the mystical abilities to, to figure out the Philosopher's Stone or, or something. Very interesting and kind of kind of creepy. So we have this thing. Uh, it's a chair. We read about it in the manual as the thousand finger chair. Creepy as all get out in the manual. It doesn't look quite as. It actually doesn't look as bad here, but all the spikes and stuff are still pretty weird. I guess let's go over here. Oh, creepy. 
look so good. You're here for treatment, aren't you? I'm sorry you're not on the schedule. You'll have to wait in the waiting room. Okay, that's long enough. <laughs> I'm Dr. Sartorius. And I'll give you a treatment you'll never forget. Sit. Sit down! I'll get things ready. She's not Dr. Sartorius. She's either one of the asylum inmates or the nurses like to pretend that they're Dr. Sartorius. Please sit down. The fear you're feeling now is far, far worse than anything I'm going to do to you. It is a far, far better place that I go to than I have ever gone. Oh. And there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Brace yourself. It's looking glass time. And wowza. Okay, I'm going to save. It's We have something we need to do while we're still goofed up like this. And, uh... It would appear that... It would appear that we're going to need to get rid of, um... Pan... Uh, relief. And try this again. Okay, I can now head back over to where that lady was and try to talk to her now that I'm all messed up. This is not the correct thing to do, but I'm curious, and it, well, it won't let you interact with that area anymore. Well, that being the case, I want to restore because we're wasting time. This effect wears off, and you need to do something before it wears off. And what you need to do is rather simple because there's not that, just nothing else that you can do on this floor. Remember that section of wall that was all weird and quivering? We need to touch it while we're weird and quivering, and it opens up. Does that make sense? I would argue no. It's a neat little puzzle. You have to get in the weird same... You, you get in this weird mode where you're, like, experiencing things that are different from reality, and then you can interact with this door, which is clearly not fully tuned into your reality, but I don't really understand exactly what happened there. Let's put it that way. It's kind of a neat puzzle visually. Um, sort of the fact that there's nothing else on that floor for you to interact with means, well, what can you do other than try that. I guess you could be wandering around on that floor forever, not realizing you have to do anything while you're still being influenced by that machine, but now we're in an elevator which doesn't appear to have um, any way to select a floor. Oh, you just go up or down. Down doesn't do anything. So go up. And this is, in fact, simply an elevator to the 21st floor. 21st floor appears to be the private section that only Sartorius interacts with. Here's a picture of a guy. There's a journal. My first surgery, it was magical. Magic no longer interests me. Sorry. Magic no longer interests me. The Enchanter's Guild now seems concerned only with power and money. Alchemy, the chance to solve the great mystery of the universe, is all I can think of now. There is so much suffering, so much pain and death. My father's science leaves much work to be done. But I will find the Philosopher's Stone and prove his name within the mocking circles of science. I am frustrated. I have devoted my career to completing my father's quest, but I now realize that one man cannot find the alchemical secret alone. Each element requires absolute mastery. Each metal requires absolute mastery. Each metal requires its own adept. I must enlist others in my search, but I must take care. Alchemy draws vain fools in search of common gold, and I must seek out only my more enlightened brothers. 
Every day I get closer to the truth. The others all want the elixir, each for his own mundane reasons. I, on the other hand, search for the final spiritual truth. One day soon I will possess the secret of eternal life, the quintessence. I will have perfect knowledge, knowledge enough to halt the growing evil that threatens us. This, pow this is powerful magic, and there is a powerful resistance. But we must not let it stop our work. The fifth essence is the quintessence, the elixir of life, the philosopher's stone. Alchemist fools through the centuries have looked at metals, vapors, and gases, and love what rot. It is none of this, it is blood, this much my father knew. The blood, the essence of innocence. But where does this blood exist? How does one distill its purity? I am surrounded by blood every day, the split blood, the spilt blood of the suffering. Yet the answers elude me. I am a disappointment. That must be a picture of his dad. Uh, Sartori is kind of a messed up guy. Okay, don't appear to be able to interact with that. Let's there is a picture of Alexander Graham Flathead. No, uh, Thomas Flathead. Edison, whatever. He was a character who was like, there was one of the previous games had a joking thing where they had all these famous historical figures rendered as Zork Flatheads, and he was the Thomas Edison guy. Not Alexander Graham Bell. Hi! The actor Tom Baker. That was the voice I was trying to do. I did a horrible job of it, though. Dr. Sartorius, it has been called to our attention that you have been practicing unorthodox and unauthorized magic. As you know, it is in violation of magical code number 6547 for a non-guild member to engage in any magical practice. Cease and desist, or we will file for fudge-unctive relief. Enchanter's Guild. Dr. Sartorius, I understand you are still perfecting the science of the ritual, but we must act now. If we do not, the quintessence will slip through our fingers. I know he has threatened even you, haunting the asylum. Our work must be completed at the Temple of the Ancients. Write, and I will arrange to meet you there. Soon, Dr. Sophia. Open your pure mind. Dear Dr. Frobian, open your pure mind. Madness is a disease, not a state of mind. I see that every day in my patients, forgotten waifs who have only me to defend them. Water riffraff drifting in from waterfront bars who no longer care where the morning finds them. <laughs> and defend them I shall. Like any disease, if madness can be studied, it can be cured. How can I cure the body of diseases if I am forbidden to open the body and study it? If I am denied funding for x-rays and medication and a staff of physicians, my asylum should be a place of progress, not the final resting place for the damned. Dr. Sartorius. Uh, SJM would be Sophia whatever. I'm not sure who SJM is, actually. Um, I'm not sure. Good doctor, since your cure, my son has kept something of his magic eye. He still sees things that cannot be seen, and for a fortnight he has wept for you day and night. He begged me to write you a warning. There is a great evil waiting for you. You will soon be dead, he cries, and asylum, the asylum destroyed, your great work unfinished. He fears powers have been disturbed, and the innocents will pay. Good luck, doctor. May York be with you, SJM. And I, Cyclops girl, I don't really understand what any of this is for. What that noise was. Let's keep exploring. Now you have to switch this over, but I'm not sure why. Somehow this whole thing doesn't work unless you switch that over. More books. Slide zones by performing extensive testing on the miniature models. Reportedly, the miniature hall of opera for Blazica was said to work as a kind of central control for the greater structure itself, and in fact, the only way the concert hall could be properly lit was by switching on the stage lights in the model. This relationship later became problematic when the diva Maria Colsed grew so substantial in person that neither she nor her enlarged entourage could fit their plump fingers inside the miniature opera and had no choice but to sing a season entirely in the dark. Eventually, Dr. Coep became so obsessed with the science of miniaturization that he stopped working at the larger scale altogether. His latter works grew smaller and smaller until they could no longer be seen by the naked eye. His famous bottomographical map of the Great Underground Empire, carved out of a single grape, led to an appointment as state miniaturist. His revisionist rendering of the massive statue of Lord Dimwet Flathead the Excessive, once towering nine bloits high above the Fridge River Valley, now etched upon a lone grain of rice, is said to be one of the best likenesses of the late 
Okay, so what they're saying is whatever I did to that model affected this place. My son, and now lie on my deathbed. I leave so much work undone. I sense I am close to the truth, yet the quintessence still eludes me. There are rumors of an ancient underground temple, a shrine which has the power to create the Philosopher's Stone. It was created by an engineer named Agrippa, but its work disappeared. You may find it. You must find it, your loving father. The Blood Alchemist by Dr. Louis Sartorius. New York Press. And it's got some stuff. The most important thing for us, the purification of tin. Given that fluorine is present in this atmosphere, helium rises, oxygen alone is without effect, hydrogen and oxygen burn coolly and create water. That's supposed to help you figure out how to uh, create the mineral, but I just kept messing with it till it worked. The Great Underground Empire Institute of Technology. Erasmus Sartorius. By the authority resided in this institution by His Royal Highness something Google Flathead, you are honored with a degree in home thaumatology and science. Notice of expulsion, dearest Dr. Sartorius, at the Galpatch University and Moss League Universities. Although we understand your need to pursue a meaningful curriculum, we strongly object to being called fat, fat, flat-footed brogmoids. Therefore, I must inform you that in the name of the Moss League of Colleges, you're hereby expelled. Have a nice day. Okay, so he's like mad scientist. He got kicked out of legit science for being crazy. I think we kind of could guess that, though. To make sure we've taken everything out of this room we need before we continue. Really seems like we should be able to interact with that. Ah, I missed the bed somehow. This is, I think, where he actually sleeps. This is his private room. There's a rubber hammer. That's the only item we actually got out of all that searching. Let's save the game, because I think we can die here, and I do like to show off all the deaths. Did you need a hand with that? That's actually not really so much a pun on what happened as a clue on how to win that puzzle. Would have been nice for the nemesis to... So anytime you die and the nemesis doesn't say anything, now I get disappointed. Because I remembered him talking a lot more than he actually does. We got some more anatomical stuff. And we got... Uh, Okay, that doesn't do us any good. The torso. Here's a brain. That doesn't do us any good. Here's a baby skeleton. That doesn't do us any good. Here's a hand. Did you need a hand with that? It gives you the devil sign. This one we are allowed to take. So, again... Oh, and it even knows a combination. Well, that makes it really easy. So, climb all the way up. And this is it. This is Secret Alchemical Chamber. This is, by far, the shortest of these, which is why I'm going to dock it out in one over-length video. I did hint the hit, hit the hint book for this one, just because I knew if I kept playing with it, I'd get it, but I was, I don't know, I was getting impatient at this point. It's my fault, really. The batteries are dead. I don't know exactly why this works. It probably makes sense if you know more about science than I do, but to recharge the batteries, you run a bunch of water... And then you let the water out. Presumably there's some kind of turbines down here that, that were spun by that. Anyway, now the batteries are on. You can't do anything with any of this until the batteries are on. This? Honestly, I just kept fiddling with it till it worked. Um, unfortunately, one of the switches we need to hit is positioned just far enough to the side of the screen that you can't touch it. Do, 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 can't touch this. You can't touch it without turning off pan relief. So, hop back in. Pan relief will now be off for the duration of this, I believe. 
but we're very close to the end. This was one creepy ass location. We got helium over here. We got a switch. We hit the switch. There's a little spark, but nothing happens. Can we turn on the helium? It lifts this thing up, but we don't really want that. Instead, we mess with these two oxygen and nit hydrogen. Well, put them both on. Let's see what happens. No, they're both off now. Let's turn them both on. We get fire. Turn that off because it said... It said something about how oxygen alone has no effect. I don't know exactly. I, I don't know what how this the whole thing works. They gave us some clues on it. Okay, now oxygen alone had no effect. I, I don't. Hmm. Now, if we get both, we have water, which will cool it somehow. Well, we can't do helium. Okay, now we do helium. Don't really understand that one, but it worked. That's good enough for right now. Pass through crumbling tunnels of Earth. And we see that the eclipse is getting closer. I think the eclipse actually hits when you've got all four metals just by wacky coincidence. And now we've done it, folks. All that's left is water, which we've already done, really. But let's go ahead and get the air speech. Let's go ahead and get Guile's air breaker. He said blood is the quintessence, but we've got plenty of blood gurgling up. Okay, so he died in flames. Although, again, it seemed like in the background I could see that the temple. This guy with his bad haircut is about to appear. I can smell my laboratory. I farted. My asylum. Very good work. What's that? You've learned the truth about Alexandria's conception. Yep. You question our methods? That's understandable. The science of alchemy is precise and demanding. So we created a girl whose conception and birth met specified planetary coordinates. She was magical. The most important thing in the world to us. If only we could have saved her from the nemesis. But, you see, I know the secret to bring us, and Alexandria, and Lucian back to life. There is a chance we can all live again. Find the remaining metals. Well, there's only one, and really there's none. Because we already did uh, that one metal. Oh. We just need to go through the little last little piece of puzzle. So, yeah. That's it, really. Uh, next time, folks, I'm going to knock out water again so that we can trigger. Sadly, and I'll explain this, I guess, again next time. This thing I talked about, my favorite sequence that uh, uh, we can't really do properly because of the way the game speed works, where there's a sequence where you have to not click. And because you have to not click and the game clock is super fast, it just plays through that like instantly and brings you to the next point where nothing will happen without an input from you. So that's actually like the ne very next thing that's going to happen. I'm a little sad. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way that I can do it or kind of replicate the experience. But 
the bottom line is we've defeated all four areas we've collected all the elements next up well, I guess I've given away the fact that we haven't won the game yet because there's this other thing to go. You, you had to know there was going to be some kind of a small, you know, end game after you've gathered the four elements. Um, but it's actually rather short, which is why the next video is going to be the last video. We've gathered the elements. We've gathered the metals. We once I load or once I uh, go through and and knock out water again real fast, which I'll do off screen. I mean, it's just that last room. Oh, you'll probably come in when I'm on the screen where you click that onk that represents the uh, pure metal of... Um, was it iron? Was that the the metal that's associated with uh, Hamilton? No, copper. When we go to that... Uh, oh, by the way, it's tin we made this, this video, if you're interested. But, yeah, in the next video, we'll begin with uh, us cursor hovering over the pure copper that we make in the conservatory, and then we'll jump into uh, the rest from there most likely, because um, we now have the power, I believe, to revive the alchemists, and the alchemists have the power to revive uh, Lucian and Alexandria. I think that's how it works. Um, at least I'm trying to replicate my thought processes going into this when I first played the game, because now I actually know how the story unfolds. But um, let's take a minute. Well, no, you know what? We won't take a minute now. We'll take a minute at the beginning of the next video to dwell on what we know about the alchemists because we're going to get, bring them back. and uh, They seem to be sorry for what they've done, but they've done some kind of bad things. So uh, we'll find out how this whole thing wraps up next time. I'm the Mysterious JG. I want to thank you guys for watching. And uh, I will see you for the next video, the final video of Let's Play Zork Nemesis. Bye-bye.